had, uh, you say you had uh, taken a sample of the uh, white uh, boulder, or was that uh, uh, too large a sample? Well, right now I'm sampling a uh, layer that is kind of a light gray just under the regular FW that was bag. Now, uh, Shepard uh, 108, Mitchell 86. Uh, Shepard uh, working harder at this time, uh, taking samples while Mitchell leveling the magnetometer. Mission control is being kind to Al and explaining away his high, high heart rate. The LPM still in your immediate area. How important to the successful completion, I mean the total completion of the mission was uh, the idea of getting right to the rim, which apparently they have not been able to do. Well, I don't think that you could uh, degrade the mission success uh, that inability, but uh, it's the kind of uh, kind of thing that I'm sure they they wanted to do, and certainly it's of uh, a lot of scientific interest uh, in uh, the business of getting to the high ground is, is always uh, important. Yes. they've been able to make it. I mean, the thing was all planned out you know, very well in advance and everything. Uh, what's, what's been the major obstacle to getting there? Just time? Or just well, I think uh, probably the major difficulty is their inability to uh, precisely which the best route and which is the proper direction in order to get to the room in uh, the available time. Yes, they are blazing their own trail, aren't they? That's, that's right, and there isn't uh, a, a flag uh, up there for them to shoot for. I know that we've all uh, in, uh, been surprised when we got to what we thought was the top of the hill to find out that there was still another one up there that you had to go up. Yes. Let's listen to them now as they talk. Uh, about eight minutes, seven and a half minutes. Chip a piece off these boulders with a hammer. Mountain. There are many scientists back on Earth that are anxiously awaiting the from these white rocks. I should certainly think so, Frank. That's uh, one of those getting uh, a sample of that uh, highland material plus perhaps some of that Imbrian Basin material that's been ejected over there is a uh, very great interest. Very 
and 45 minutes into the second moonwalk. Al Shepard and Ed Mitchell, which are working hard, not quite able to reach the rim of Cone Crater, working in a large boulder field, chipping away with hammers to bring back samples of these unusual white rocks they found on the boulders, parts of the boulders, and getting photographs. There's hardly anything that I can find to see if I can chip one. This will be another exciting day. We have the, the lift off and then the, the docking. Are, are they relatively certain there'll be no do docking problems now, Neil? Well, I, I uh, believe that uh, they shouldn't have any trouble. There's no reason to suspect from the data we have that they won't have a normal, normal docking. It looks like that equipment all should work properly. Hear Fred Hayes gently telling them to get on their way. Yes. <laughs> and another note I'll remind you of uh, later on. Uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Neil, we know that uh, you've got other things to do today, and we're very grateful to you for uh, coming here to talk with us on this. I think the most exciting part of the mission so far, anyway, in terms of their uh, exploration of the lunar surface. So thank you very, very much. It's been very good to have you here with us. Thank you, Frank. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I know uh, those guys are having a great time up there, and I, I think they're doing a great job. I, I really look forward to getting them back. Well, we certainly agree with you on that. Thank you very much, Neil. See you later, Neil. Right. Nice to see you, Neil. I, Neil and I used to be neighbors, and the only time I see him now is on the television screen. Nice to see you, Neil. Nice. To bring us up to date now, two hours and 50 minutes into the second moonwalk, Al Shepard and Ed Mitchell are near the rim of Cone Crater, but at the time, working their way through very large and difficult boulder fields, high terrain, sloping terrain, having found the terrain slopes uh, and inclines higher than they expected and the lunar lighting far more deceptive than anyone expected, that they have had to stop, stop just short of the rim of Cone over here and are photographing and trying to get samples of chips of the rocks with their hammers from these large boulders before turning around. Mission Control is now beginning to urge them to uh, get turned around and has dropped some smaller experiments, such as the polarimetric experiment, which is a light polarizing photographic experiment using special filters. Capcom Fred Hayes has begun to urge them to turn around and get started back toward, toward their Antares lunar module. The next stop uh, will be at uh, Station F from They're going to skip one station to move back to Station F down here at a site called Weird Crater. But they're still working up here and have a long way to go before they can make it back to uh, Station F. They've been out now for more than uh, two hours and 36 minutes, according to the uh, count we had just a minute ago from Mission Control. Well, we'll have more on Apollo 14 right after this message. This is Frank Reynolds with Frank Borman and Jules Bergman at ABC Space Headquarters in New York. This is uh, certainly the most exciting part of this lunar exploration thus far as the astronauts work their way around uh, very close to the rim of uh, Cone Crater. And let's go back now to our lunar surface uh, relief map here so that we can see exactly where they are and listen to this air-to-ground conversation. 
And recapping here, it's happened in the last few hours. We're nearly three hours into the second moonwalk. Shepard and Mitchell have not been able to reach the rim of cone, have turned around, working through this boulder field. And Capcom Fred Hayes and Mission Control are urging them to speed up. They've fallen about a half an hour behind their timeline, their flight plan schedule. Let's get Shepard now in the air to ground. One way now. This second moonwalk complicated, of course, by the fact that they have to also go back to the ALSEP station from yesterday's first moonwalk to adjust the antenna. Obviously, not by atmosphere, but but eroded by some process because they all show. They show evidence of being uh, broken up, either by impact or subsequently. And uh, it looks to me as though these rocks are really pretty old. You can hear Shepard and Mitchell breathing hard. They have turned around and are headed back toward Antares, their lunar module. Picking their way between the boulders, trying to find a trail. You have to. Uh, 